Hi everyone, it's Nancy, and I'm back for our February book reviews. So, let's grab our tea, get settled, and let's get into it. Okay, this month I read four books. And this brings me to having read nine out of my 30 that I had um, set for my goal for this year. And I am currently four years, four years, four books ahead of schedule. So um, I wanted to share all of these with you today. But before we start, I just want to ask you, are you crazy with this weather here in Missouri? We have gone from 81 day to snow, eight to 10 inches of snow the next day, and then back, you know, mild weather, and then here comes the snow again. What is up? Is winter mad at us or what? Here we are again today. It looks nice outside, it's 40 some degrees, but the wind is really chilly. We're expecting snow. We have a weather advisory from tonight through Friday. So we'll see what that brings us. But in the meantime, I'm just reading my books and having fun with those. So in February, <clears throat> excuse me, I started out with The Glass Woman. That's by Caroline, Caroline Lee. And I gave this book three stars. I found it to be really interesting. It was uh, kind of thought provoking actually. It was based in Ireland, Ireland, Iceland in 1686. And all the way through, it was haunted by the feeling of the witch trials and all the ancient tales that all these little towns would have and pass down from generation to generation. It was really, it really made it kind of eerie the way this was happening. Rosa is the person that we're following, and <clears throat> her father died, and then her mother became very ill, and it was really hard for her to make enough and find enough food to uh, keep the two of them healthy and going throughout this winter. So she sees a man come to town who is looking for a wife, and she is unexpectedly betrothed to him. Unfortunately, this means she has to move to a new village, and, you know, that village is very wary of all outsiders, doesn't like people coming in their village, is really concerned with what's going on. Um, and then they start spreading rumors of what happened to her new husband's first wife. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard for her to be calm and um, not pay attention to people, but she's lonely and she has to reach out to someone in the village to be able to keep her sanity because, you know, you can just imagine Iceland in the winter time, all snow, you're snowed in, you know, drifts as tall as you are. So Rosa reaches out and she does make a friend and her husband is very um, against it because of all of the rumors that everyone spreads. But he does gift her with a little necklace and it's of a glass woman. Now, she has no idea why he's given this to her and doesn't know if it has some special meaning or what. So she wears it and she treasures it because it's one of the few times he was nice to her. And um, the bad thing is she can feel evil is in this land, but she doesn't know where it's coming from. And she doesn't know who will be next? Will it be her? We don't know. So you'll have to read the book and find that out. The second book I read was Blackbird House 
by Alice Hoffman, and I gave that four stars. I'm really liking this series that um, she's got going on right now. This one follows several generations throughout the years, and it discusses how each of them are connected to one house and how that house grows over time and morphs into something different. I just want to read you the summary here because I thought that really summed it up really well. And um, I didn't know that I had the words for it. The summary is, through these interconnected narratives, more than a dozen men and women learn how love transforms us and how it is the one lasting element in our lives. Really cool, really interesting, right? I found it very interesting and I would highly recommend it. It was a very enjoyable book and I, I really liked it. The next book I read was The Nature of Witches, Three Stars. Oh, and it's by Rachel Griffin. I thought this book was pretty good. It's a new twist on the magic that witches possess. Um, you know, we all have our own notion of how a witch's magic is used and gained and what you do. Um, this one, their magic was related to the seasons and they helped keep things in balance throughout the world for those humans who did not have uh, the magical abilities. So, it, you know, that's a new twist. I hadn't heard that one before. I, I liked that concept. And um, it is a young, a young adult book, but the storyline was somewhat predictable. At the same time, it really was good and it kept you going. Um, the summary on it says, For centuries, witches have maintained the climate, their power from the sun, peaking in the season of their birth. But now their control is faltering as the atmosphere becomes more erratic. All hope lies with Clara, an everwitch whose rare magic is tied to not one, but all seasons. So it was really interesting that Clara, you know, had spring, summer, fall, and winter, where most witches only had the one season when they were born. That's when their power was at the highest and they could um, work their magic best. They still had some power in the off seasons, but very limited. And normally they had to join down in groups in order to make it work. So Clara is our heroine and she is challenged with trying to help calm the world and reconnect all of the energies so that they flow properly and all of the humans are safe. So I think you might like it. You might give that a try if you want something just light, light and easy to read. The next, the last book I read in February was The Red Garden by Alice Hoffman. It's a continuation of the other stories that I've read by her. And it's an introduction to the haunting world of Blackwell, Massachusetts. We get transforming glimpses of small town America and 300 plus years of passion, dark secrets, loyalty, and redemption all woven into a web of tales. Alice Hoffman is very good at doing this. And if you haven't read her books, I would recommend you check some out. In this book, as you can tell from the name, The Red Garden, the garden is the center of everyone's life. But it's not your everyday garden. Everything that grows in this garden is red. The soil is red. The plants, no matter what color they were when they went in, they turn red. So 
that makes it very unusual and it makes it a um, what I want to say the town is very suspicious of it they don't understand what's going on there and why why that soil does what it does also when the different um, people have been planting in it they've come across bones and there's a big mystery as to why those bones are there what they are was someone buried there was something buried there they don't know and the town um, historians feel like they should have a say in what happens in that garden now because there are bones so only the truth can be found in this garden by those who dare to look the story is an, as unforgettable as it is moving. I think you would like that one. That, my friends, is the end of my book reviews. I have already read this month, Cruel, which is a um, part of a series. I'm sorry, I don't know the author's name. And I'm going on book two now. I'm ready for that. I can probably find the author's name on my phone. Let me look here real quick. See if I can tell you. Jennifer Albin, A-L-B-I-N. It's really, really interesting. So I will have that to talk to you about next month. And I'm on book two, as I said, and it is entitled Altered. And I know there's at least one more book, so I hope to get through that and have the whole series done this month and can talk to you about that next month. In the meantime, I hope you are enjoying this channel and that you um, have subscribed. When you do, please give me a like and also hit the little bell for the notifications so you know when I get my have my next video come out. Um, please leave me a comment. Let me know how you think things are going. Let me know how your weather is in your area. And um, oh, and one thing I wanted to tell you was <clears throat> we've just discovered the name of my channel, Tea and Treasures, is being used by some, another person also. So I may have to change that name again. And I'm I'm at a loss as to what to call the channel now. You know, do I go back to Nettle's Place? Do I just leave it as Tea and Treasures? Do I think of something new? What do y'all think? So let me know in the comments below. And um, until next time, brightest blessings.